Hello everyone, my name is Bolushan and welcome back to the channel. And the first thing, everybody who has any idea what nice audio sounds like knows that this video sounds awful. I'm really sorry, I don't know where my microphone is. I will hopefully find it soon, but for now, I'm going to do what I promised to do at the end of my Tyson Fury video. So this week, since we're on the road to Undisputed in present day, let's look back at the last Undisputed heavyweight champion. So today, I want to break down and analyse Lennox the Lion Lewis, one of the greatest British fighters to walk the earth. As always, statistics are a must in this case. 41, 2 and 1. 41 wins, 2 losses and 1 draw in controversial fashion, which I will bring up later. He stood 6 feet 5 inches tall and, on average, during his prime, weighed in at around 245 pounds. So he's a pretty big guy, kind of a similar size to, for today's reference, Anthony Joshua. He was a three-time world champion. He was a uh, two-time lineal champion, and he was the last heavyweight to hold the undisputed title. He's had a pretty insane title history. He was about three defences deep into his title run when he lost his title to Oliver McCall on the 24th of September 1994. It was a huge upset KO, it was in Wembley and all, and he lost it. Because Lennox lost his title in two extremely, extremely big upsets which I think shows just how impressive and how masterful a champion was. Anyway, he worked his way back up to uh, holding the title and then went to unify the title against an aforementioned name that I've mentioned in my Mike Tyson video, Evander Holyfield. The first fight which took place on the 13th of March 1999 was a very controversial draw. Just like looking at it from a statistical standpoint, the whole fight was Lewis's. I think he landed over three, about 350 punches, whereas I think Holyfield landed a little over 100. It was a very controversial draw and of course people wanted a rematch, so that's exactly what they got on the 13th of November 1999. The second fight was a lot more interesting because it was a little more competitive. Lewis did focus more on his jab and stuff, but like rounds six through nine were a solid draw and fans were left very entertained. Lewis won the fight and went on to, uh, he became undisputed heavyweight champion after winning the fight by unanimous decision. It was an incredible performance by Lewis, Evander Holyfield's one of the greatest heavyweights ever, so it was a very impressive performance to say the least. However, on the 21st of April 2001, he lost his title to 21-1 to underdog Hassim Rahman. This was a massive upset. I mean, he was a 21, he was a 20 to 1 underdog. In the rematch, he knocked him out in the fourth and regained his titles on the 17th of November of that same year. And then, of course, the one everyone thinks of, generally speaking, when they think of Lennox Lewis, is his, of course, his legendary fight with Mike Tyson. Ticket sales were pretty slow. Considering they went at times for as high as £2,400, yeah, I'd imagine they'd be slow, but fans got what they wanted on June the 8th, 2002. However, Tyson was hilariously fined 300000 for biting during a news conference. This seems to be a recurring theme in Mike Tyson's life, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I certainly have from looking at these boxers. Tyson bites a lot. However, Lewis won the fight. Not comfortably, but he pretty clearly won it. Tyson was really slow in the seventh, you know, he was swelling up, he was just sluggish and slow, and of course, Lewis KO'd him in the eighth. I think it sold about 1.9 million pay-per-view buys, which is an astronomical number. I think that's more than most of the UFC events in history. And Lennox's last really legendary fight was his absolutely superb retiring fight against Vitaly Klitschko, not to be confused with, confused with Vladimir Klitschko, the dominant, like, 10-year undefeated world champion, the absolute monster who laid a whole division to waste. No, his brother, who's not a politician. June 21st, 2003, it all went down, and it was an insanely, insanely brutal fight. It was... it's pretty grim at times. Klitschko was ahead on the scorecards, um, 
I think he had a few rounds up, but after uh, Lewis landed some heavy shots, the fight actually was stopped by a doctor because Klitschko couldn't see properly out of one of his eyes. Klitschko needed stitches after this. 60 of them. 60 stitches. What? How do you inflict that much damage on someone? It's beyond me. It's genuinely beyond me. It was an incredible fight. And after this, I think, I think Lewis not only thought, I think I've done enough, but also probably wanted a break. So he retired in 2004 and vacated all his titles. And this isn't where his story ends. He still works as a commentator every once in a while and just generally offers his opinion where it's asked. But I think we can all remember Lennox Lewis for quite a few things. Firstly, his just his actual boxing skills were really good. He had a very authoritative jab, right? Like, he was very... He dictated the way fights went just with his jab alone. And if someone dared try to disrespect the jab, well, they got knocked out because his right hand was insanely strong. He had incredible power. He had a great boxing, like, base skill set. He had a good ring IQ. And he also just had a sensational chin, like the guy who could take shots like nothing else. Lennox Lewis will always be one of the greatest British fighters ever, and one of the greatest heavyweights to ever walk the earth. And I think people will always remember him as such. And rightfully so, he was an incredible fighter and always will be one of the greatest British fighters ever. Thank you all for watching, I hope you all enjoyed. I'm really sorry about the mic quality. I don't like it either, but uh, I had to put out a video, so here we are. Um, next week, I'm not gonna do a heavyweight. I'm gonna start branching out with this series. Don't, don't worry, I will still do other heavyweights. I still plan to do a video on George Foreman. I plan to do a video on Sonny Liston. I'll probably do one on Evander Holyfield and one or two other great heavyweights. But next week, we're gonna go down to featherweight. Because next week, I want to cover another incredible British fighter and one of my favourite boxers of all time. So next week, I'm going to be covering one of my favourite stylistic fighters to ever step into the square circle. Next week, I'm going to make a video on Prince Nassim Hamid. I can't tell you how excited I am for that video. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe, all of the nonsense. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed, have a good day, and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you, goodbye.